Hey guys, this is a real quick short on diagnostic testing for heart failure. Um, so um, there is a variety of tests and some of these are things we've already talked about when it comes to cardiac diagnostics. So I'm going to talk about some of the ones we already talked about, and then I'm going to talk about the ones that are specific or really focused for heart failure. Um, so there's labs um, that we're going to check that's going to be things like what their potassium is. Um, they can be really prone to electrolyte imbalances. They can be prone to kidney issues. They can be prone to fluid um, fluid balance things. So um, we really want to check to see how they're doing with that. And then also kidney function, because like I said, if the heart's not pumping, the kidneys are not going to be working the way that they need to. So these people can have like dual like kidney and heart failure. Um, we also want to see if, because there's less perfusion to the heart, if the heart itself is getting the perfusion it needs. And these patients are also very high risk for having, um, you know, um, heart attacks and other things, or the heart attack can sometimes cause the heart failure, et cetera. So we're going to check biomarkers like troponin, CK, and B. Um, we're also going to look for plaque and blockage issues. That's going to be your cholesterol level. So your total cholesterol, your HDLs, LDLs, and triglycerides. Um, then we're also going to look for the size and structure of the heart. So you do not have to read chest x-rays, but look at this baby. Look, you can tell how big it is. There should be this, at least semi amount of space over here. Like this lung should be cut like, or not lung, this uh, heart should not be this fat. Um, and while it looks super cute and like all puffed up, kind of like when babies come out and they're almost cute, they're all puffy and stuff. Um, and so um, uh, we cut them. Um, this heart is super big um, and super big is not super helpful. And so um, when it comes down to it, there's not enough space for, you know, expansion of the lungs and it's taken up a lot of that lung space. So really when you think about a fatty heart here or a very large heart here um, is what you would expect to see. You will see on the report, it's not going to say fatty heart, it's going to say enlarged heart. Um, so then we're also going to do a 12 lead EKG because like I said, they're a really high risk for atrial, um, fibril uh, yeah, atrial fibrillation and then also ventricular rhythm. So we're going to, um, keep a close eye on that. So then those are like in general, cause we want to check their cardiac function. And, um, the, the other one that's different, the chest x-ray will show a large heart usually, but the two that are going to be the like most definitive and most helpful are going to be what's known as the BNP. And I always call it BN as in. Nancy P, because there's also a B M as in Michael P. Um, so you always want to think about the B Nancy P. Um, and then also the echo are going to be the two definitive um, tests for this. And so the BNP um, is going to tell us specifically about the amount of fluid that the person has on their heart. Um, so this is really going to tell us if they're having an acute exacerbation or how much stretch. It, it measures the amount of fluid stretch in the heart. And so if this is elevated, this is a sign that the person has too much fluid on their heart. So we can use this to help diagnose heart failure. We can also use this to help with treatment. Um, so like if a patient comes in and they have heart failure already and their BNP is like 2000, um, it's going to tell the doctor, hey, they need some diuretics. Whereas if their um, BNP is normal, like, you know, it's going to help to guide care. Or let's say I gave a diuretic and then their BNP went down, it's showing that that's working for them. Then the echo, that's going to be where they do an ultrasound of the heart. And for this procedure, we like them left side lying um, in order. It helps get the heart to kind of move more towards the for, uh, forward part or front part of the chest. And they're going to do, um, they're going to be checking for pumping action. So effectively what that means is they're seeing how much blood is the heart spitting out or what's known as the ejection fraction. So this is going to help in heart failure because it's going to really tell me like pretty much the BNP helps to diagnose and monitor how the fluid status is working. Um, but the echo tells me how the heart is pumping. How well is it pumping out? And so the normal is 55 to 70%. And what that actually is measuring is it's saying that 55 to 70% of the blood in the left ventricle gets pumped out. Believe it or not, that's normal. I know you might be thinking like, what about the other 30%? I don't know, man, I can't tell you, but all I'm going to tell you is that's normal. So with people with heart failure, they're going to be less than that. So I would expect a person with heart failure to have, like they might start out with a ejection fraction, 40 to 45%. Um, these people can get down to the point, people diagnosed with heart failure can get down to the point where they have less than 5% function, less than 10%, less than 20%. And when they get down that low, imagine if less than 5% of the blood that's in their left ventricle is actually getting out to their body. Like that is severe, poor perfusion, severe failure. Um, so this is what we can kind of look at to see pumping versus fluid status, because that's the two problems um, that we have in heart failure. What are we going to do for our pumping problem? What are we going to do for our fluid problem? Anyway, that's all I have for this one. We're going to go into treatments next. I'll see you there.